Hello everybody and welcome to the barbecue shop here at Hayes Garden World. Once again we're joined by top barbecue chef Mr Richard Holden. Hi folks. And in this video we're going to be doing your signature porchetta. Yeah we're going to be doing a, a porchetta dish which is belly pork with a, a really nice flavoured stuffing rolled up, tied and cooked off on the barbecue to perfection. And for this recipe we're going to be using the Traeger Timberline 850. Right, and so for this one, we've had to do a little bit of prep in the kitchen just to make the filling for our, our porchetta. So in the saucepan here, we sweated off some onion and some fennel bulb, uh, finely diced that, softened that down. Then to that, we added some minced pork, browned that off, added in some garlic and some coriander seed that we just crushed down in a pestle and mortar. Um, then take that off the heat, let that cool, add to that some fresh sage, some fresh rosemary, some orange zest. And when it's actually properly cold, then we add in an egg just mix that together and just leave that. So that is what is in this dish here, in this saucepan here. So that's our filling for our porchetta, okay? So over here we got our piece of pork belly. Uh, the butcher's scored the skin, the rind nice and, uh, and deeply for us. So that should turn into crackling really, really nicely. We're just gonna season this a little bit on the inside. And we're not gonna add any pepper to this because we've got some really, really great flavors coming through from the stuffing, so. Let's just take this mixture. This is something that you could do in advance. If you're gonna make this over the festive season, sometimes, you know, obviously Christmas, Christmas Day is the turkey for a lot of people, can, can be beef. You might have another dish that you like to do. Um, Boxing Day might be leftovers, might be turkey curry, but by the time you get to the 27th, maybe 28th, thinking we've got some people coming over, we wanna do something nice, we don't just wanna do leftovers. This could be an ideal dish for that situation. So just make that nice and evenly layered across. Make sure you get it all the way to the edge, because I don't know about you, but I don't want to be the person that gets the last no. slice. You want to make sure that filling is all the way to the edge. I know I say this a lot on these videos, but that does smell epic. It really does, the flavor coming through already. Fresh herbs in your food yep. just knock everything up a notch. So now's the time to make like a Swiss roll. So I'm just going to... Curve that all around, bring that back, press that nice and firmly, get it all nice and compacted. It looks good already, but we need to hold it in place. So we get our ball of string, and uh, you think that you're never gonna need a piece of string as long, but you do, because there are a few things worse in life than getting to the end of tiny porchetta and realizing that your piece of string isn't long enough, unless, you do what I've just done, which is get your piece of string so long that it knots itself. So really easily, take one end of your string, just make a loop, and then tie that into a knot. If you're one of the butchers out there watching this, then you just do your fancy string knot, okay? But the rest of us, this is a really easy thing. So take a loop, and then what we'll do is just bring that underneath our porchetta on one end, bring that up and put the other end, the long end, through there. And then we're just going to secure that in place. We're not trying to strangle it. We're just trying to hold it in place. We want the juices to be able to run freely. So we've got our, our kind of slip knot on the top. And then what we do is we just bring that tail end down. And we can just hold, hold that string through again. And some of the string will go, the string might go into some of these um, score marks. But we're just going to try and get that nice and lined up. Now this is where my OCD kicks in, so I like, like to get the strings nice and neat. But we're just looking to hold this all in place. And we just carry on, probably get about five loops on this. And this is where I'm already thinking I'm just on the edge of getting my string long enough. So we get five there. Now where do we secure that? Well, we turn that over and we go along the underside roll it back over. Now we've come back to where we started from. So we can tie that around and we can tie our string against itself. And just do one more for luck. And as I say, this is something that you could do in advance of actually the day of cooking. We'll just take these little bits of filling, pop those back in there. And that, oh, could I get you to season the outside of the pork for me? I'll just Hold it 
in position. So this is going to give us a nice crackling. It is, yeah. We're going so to... there's none of this where people say run it under the tap or... You don't need to. No. no. We're, going to we're going to cook this in the barbecue at 200 degrees C, uh, 425 if you're watching this in North America. Um, but yeah, we're going to cook this off at 200 degrees C. What's going to happen is um, the score marks are going to be perfect for allowing the hot fat to run away. Season my hand there, sorry. Got my hand right in the way of that one. It's all good, it's what happens. That's enough. We haven't even had a sherry yet. Nope. Or a port or a champagne or anything like that. We're not high maintenance here at all. So um, we are ready to go to the grill. Right, let's take this to the grill. So we've got our Traeger set up at 200 degrees. Beauty about the Timberline version is that we've got this extendable rack. So we're just going to bring this over, pop that in. Could I get you to do the the honours with the probe for me, the can. temperature probe. So the, tim the, uh, the Traegers come with uh, temperature probes as standard, and uh, this just allows us to make sure that we've got the, the uh, monitoring the core temperature of the food as it's cooking. Just pop that, slide that back in, tuck those inside. We put it on the lower level so that we get that good heat. Oh, pop that back in. So that we get the really a little bit more intense heat because it's lower down near to where that sort of heat is originating from. Um, but what we can do there as well is we can make sure that we get that sub layer of fat underneath the rind really nicely heated up and running, and then that allows the sub layer of fat to run out and we get really crispy crackling. So we're going to leave that for a good hour and a half, but we're going to be guided by our cool temperature. And of course, with the Timberline, we can use the app. Yes, we can. So we're going to we're going to be looking for a final temperature with this pork of around about 73, 74 degrees C. Nice and tender, beautifully cooked on the inside, great crackling on the outside. So is our pork kettle ready? It certainly is. Temperature probe is telling us that we are good to go. Nice bit of smoke coming through as always on the Traeger. Oh, I need a, need a towel just to take that probe out. There we go, that can sit in there. So we've got a beautiful colour on the crackling and on the meat itself as well. Take this out. Onto a wooden chopping board. So we're gonna give this about 45 minutes to rest, put some tin foil over it, a couple of nice clean tea towels just to keep it nice and warm. And uh, we'll come back and slice this very, very soon. We've let it rest, taken the strings off. And um, if we just use the back of the knife, I'm not sure if you can pick that up on the audio, but nice crispy crackling on there. There's um, gonna be a fight for the crackling. I think there will be. You can see, Beautiful, nice little, um, beautiful little smoke ring on there. That crackling is really tough. There we go. So beautifully moist all the way through. Again, as we talk about in all these roasting videos, um, one of the massive benefits of roasting outside in our country, we always say we don't have the weather for barbecues, what well, we do, roast outside in your barbecue using indirect heat and your barbecue's gonna draw in that beautiful damp air that we have a lot of in this country. So you, as a result, your meat stay beautifully juicy as well. Only cook to 75 degrees if you cook into well done and away you go. So I'll keep on slicing this, we'll get a few slices and then... Uh... Looking forward to trying this. So if you're interested in uh, how we've done this recipe, visit our website hayesgardenworld.co.uk uh, or see the staff here in the barbecue shop in the garden centre. We're across all the social media platforms so if you do recreate this share a picture with us we're always interested to see people's uh absolutely let us know how you crisp. get on it smells as always Look at that. amazing that looks really really nice good. little bit of a pink smoke ring all the way around the outside so Beautiful. all that's left for us to say is merry christmas merry christmas folks enjoy and we'll see you again next time see you soon